Asian Americans are facing discrimination not felt since the Japanese American internment camps during World War II. High unemployment and boycotts of businesses have ravaged their communities. As Weijia Zhang reports, there is also a disturbing trend of racist attacks. Oh my God! Asian. Oh my God! Here. These are the kinds of attacks Asian Americans have faced this year. Every disease has ever came from China, homie. Everything comes from China. It's just disgusting. I don't think that there had ever been a time where I was scared or fearful of my life because of my race. 26-year-old Victor Yang says he will never forget that day in March when a bike ride with his girlfriend on these familiar Maryland trails ended with a frantic call for help. DC 911. I uh, ran right out on the bike trail. I've had these kids chasing us, throwing rocks. Stop it! Oh, you! You stop it! Run my you up! What was shocking was these individuals kept on following us, then taunting us, saying, coronavirus or COVID-19. What happened to Yang is one of over 2,800 hate incidents reported against Asian Americans across the country since the pandemic started seven months ago. A nearly 845 percent increase compared to all the reported cases in the last three years combined. What are you doing in this country? What am I doing in this country? Oh, you look at this. This, this What am I doing in this country? Yeah. What am I doing in this country? I'm an American people. citizen. Asian American hate is as old as American history. 83-year-old actor and civil rights advocate George Takei was four years old when Pearl Harbor was attacked in 1941. And overnight, this country was swept up by suspicion and fear and naked outright hatred. We had nothing to do with Pearl Harbor. There was no charge other than looking like this. So it's no surprise to Takei that Asian Americans today are shouldering blame for the coronavirus. Americans said we don't want you here. That's why we elected President Trump. Especially, he says, since the attacks are starting from the top. We have political leadership that is using that and constantly using the term Chinese virus. I would like to begin uh, by announcing some important developments in our war against the Chinese virus. President Trump first publicly said the phrase Chinese virus to describe COVID-19 on March 18th. Five days later, he crossed out the language from his prepared remarks, declaring this instead. It's very important that we totally protect our Asian American community in the United States and all around the world. But as the pandemic worsened, he resurrected the rhetoric. Mr. Trump even brought up Beijing when I asked him about testing. Why is this a global competition to you if every day Americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day? Well, they're losing their lives everywhere in the world. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me, ask China that question, okay? When you ask them that question, you may get a very unusual answer. Yes, behind you, please. What, sir, why are you saying that to me specifically? I'm telling you, I'm not saying it specifically to anybody. I'm saying it to anybody that would ask a nasty question That's like that. That's not a nasty Please question. go ahead. During a campaign rally in June, President Trump's tough talk took another turn. I can name Kung Flu. I can name 19 different versions of names. The Justice Department included COVID-19 backlash in their hate crimes training, but has yet to take additional measures to combat the anti-Asian discrimination. During the George W. Bush administration, the DOJ formed a special task force after the 9-11 terrorist attacks to prosecute crimes against Muslim Americans. People were afraid to come out. Every time they came out to go buy groceries, they're looking behind their backs. They're, they're fearful of being attacked just because they were Chinese. A lack of federal help isn't stopping community activists like Carlin Chan. Since March, he and his group of volunteers have been patrolling Manhattan's Chinatown, his hometown of over 60 years. We may actually see more rising hate crimes. Staying quiet is not an option anymore. 
In Culver City, California, the next generation of Asian Americans like Tammy Cho couldn't keep silent anymore either. If we do not address this issue now and continue to have dialogue, we're going to see history repeat itself again. Cho co-created the group Hate is a Virus. Hate is a virus. Hate is a virus. Hoping to raise a million dollars to help keep family businesses and restaurants impacted by COVID-19 afloat. Whatever it will take to stop the discrimination from spreading. I do think COVID in some ways was a catalyst for these issues coming into the surface. Back in Washington, D.C., Victor Yang, who now works for the Florida Democratic Party, says bringing light to incidents like the one he experienced is critical to move forward. The last thing that we want in this country is more violence. We are citizens like every other American. Coming up, a new generation of the model minority joins the social justice movement.